there's a lot of gloom and doom out there. You know, we've had guests on the show who said there's going to be millions of layoffs in tech. We just saw Snap announce a 20% cut across the board. What are you seeing that tells you it's not so gloomy? That's a great question. And, you know, we, we sort of saw the same stuff in the market, all the VC memos, all the headlines. We said, let's take a look at the data. And so for us, we're the largest startup accountant in the United States. We have thousands of customers. We processed $100 billion of accounting transactions last year. We said, what does the data show? And what we did is we took a look at about 1,000 of our customers, and two kind of key data points emerged. The first was that in June, we found that 86% of them actually maintained or even increased headcount. And then from a revenue growth perspective, Q1 definitely was a bit soft for folks, but we saw Q2's revenue growth to be actually very comparable to late 2021. So indicators are actually looking pretty good for this kind of early mid-stage startup segment. Okay, so what's the discrepancy in the numbers? That's a great question. And I think here's what's going on, which is especially in the early and mid-stage, I think two things are happening. The first is that there's definitely pain from the downturn, but I think it's more specifically and more pronouncedly felt by companies that are really have nice to have offerings as opposed to who really need to have offerings. And the second is I think the dynamics in kind of the late stage and public markets are very different than what you see in the earlier kind of mid-stage ecosystem for startups. Okay. Uh, well, let's take Snap as an example. 20% cuts. We also reported that Meta is cutting off with hundreds of contractors. Alphabet's in the middle of a hiring freeze. Apple, I talked to Tim Cook, you know, they're going to pull back on some hiring and spending plans going into next year. He said they're being very deliberate about their spending. Wouldn't it be an even more difficult world for startups that are relying on, you know, whatever they have in the bank to survive, and many of which aren't profitable? Yeah, so I mean, you definitely think so, but I think the thing that's interesting is, let's say you're a startup, you're targeting a $60 billion market. And because of the downturn, maybe it's now only a $40 billion market. But you're concerned about getting from 0.05% adoption to 0.1% adoption. You're not running into the ceiling. Whereas you know these public companies absolutely are. When there is a 20 or 30% reduction, they're going to feel that in the financials. Your business is, is interesting. And I wonder what sort of trends you're seeing in your own business in the downturn. Are more companies turning to outsourcing with services like yours rather than having these systems internally because they're trying to limit their own internal headcount. Absolutely. I think there are kind of two phenomenons we're observing. One is folks that might have built the function in-house are more interested in the flexibility of relying on an external provider. And the second is I think the tone has changed among startups where in 2021, you know, it was really the era of growth at all costs. Now it's, look, you need to know your metrics. You need to know the KPIs. You have to be really sharp on the numbers. And lots of folks come to us to just get a better handle on those stats. How are you handling the downturn internally? I mean, how are you making decisions? Do we maintain headcount? Do we continue to hire? Do we make cuts? So one of the things we feel really strongly about is the amount of money you spend cannot be a function of how much you have in your bank account. You sort of have to earn the right to spend it. There's this concept called the burn multiple, which is the amount of new recurring revenue you add in a given period and its relation to your burn rate that those need to stay in lockstep. So for us, we think about how those ratios look. And then we also try to pre-compute a little bit. Look, if revenue trends in way X, this is what we'll do. If revenue trends in way Y, this is what we'll do, so that we don't have to be surprised if, as the situation changes. Some of your investors, Sequoia, Bezos Expeditions, what are they telling you? Have you gotten any advice from Jeff Bezos? Jeff Bezos you know, has not given me a call. I'm still waiting for, uh, for the call and text from Jeff. It's been, it's been interesting because I think the dynamics are highly variable depending on what the company is up to. One of the things that we like at Pilot is you have to do your accounting. I mean, even in tech, tough economic times, you're not going to just not do your tax return. So mm -hmm. we, we're hoping or we feel that our business is more recession proof or downturn proof than the average. Does a more hawkish Fed uh, change things for you and your own business? You know, it's interesting because I think the public market dynamics, you know, we're many, many years away from being a public company. And I think for the companies we serve, we're, we're really but interested in. In the private markets, there are down rounds, there are layoffs, uh, there is belt tightening, there are companies making hard decisions about their priorities. I think it's absolutely true. And I think you sort of need to kind of keep that hawkish eye on what's happening in your bank account, your current runway, now more than ever, because as you said, access to capital is definitely comparatively limited. So 
As you look ahead over the next year, what are some of the questions you're going to be asking the companies that you're working with to give you clues about how the market is changing? Like maybe this is what the data says now, but maybe it's there's a delay. Sure. Yeah, I think we look at a couple things. One is our CFO services team works very closely with a bunch of our customers to help them build out their own financial models, their own forecasts, their own budget. I think we'll also see really good data about what happens in fundraising markets. There's a lot of kind of pent up dry powder at VC firms that is not currently being deployed. I think hmm. depending on sort of when that starts to get released into the market, I think we will see potentially very different results. Have you had any, I mean, are you in the middle of fundraising or have you had conversations with investors that have led you to think one way or another about so which way the wind is blowing? We fortunately raised a big round in 2021 and so we have a very healthy <laughs> nest egg. We're not out there looking for funding, but you know, I think it's going to be highly variable. It's hard to say.